That's right, gang, we made it to Iceland and we're getting the passport stamped so we can go have some fun. The Blue Lagoon, huh? Wow, even in Iceland you can get your Duncan on. All right, well I'm on the flyaway bus just about to head to Reykjavik. It's about a 45 minute drive. Well, good morning, Lion Hearts. It's your old pal Jordan the Lion here in the windy weather of Iceland. My hair is getting blown all over the place, but take a look at the skies, man. Woo! Awesome. So we finally made it here. Um, it took a while. Had to get off the airport and then transfer, but I've now made it to Reykjavik, the main city that I'm going to be hanging out in today. And I actually met a girl that was on my um, flyaway bus here. And she's here for pretty much the same amount of time in the layover, so we're just gonna hang out together and hit all the spots together so we don't get lost and hopefully two heads are better than one. So, should be an interesting day. Her name's Kasha. So, Days with Jordan the Lion and Kasha begins now. Well, I'm just gonna wander my way through the city today. The real destination is tonight. But we're gonna go to the most famous church in Iceland right now. And this is Kasha, hey. my travel buddy today. Yeah. Making our way through this little park and I'm really excited to see this church because they have a, uh, yeah. a really amazing statue that I saw online of Leif Erikson, since he's of course from Iceland. Oh, this place is so cute. Dude, they've got flowers. Pomona, statue of Pomona. Look at that tree house. You gotta love Iceland already. Well, there's the church that we're looking for. We're getting closer and closer. Well, unfortunately, one of the tours that I told you guys about fell through. They never found a second person to go, so it was either take a five hour tour, which would have been great, but I would have had to give up the main thing that I wanted to do while I was here in Iceland, so there it is. Let's go. There it is. The statue and the church. And we're gonna go on in now. Well, apparently there's a funeral going on, so it's not open at the present time. But we'll come back in a little while when it is and we'll go inside. So now we're gonna take this main strip right down through Reykjavik. And I think it actually takes you to the beach. Well, we just found Fred. Hi, Fred. Oh, we gotta go in this place. The oldest workshop in Iceland. Oh, wow. I gotta see this statue. Can't put stuff like this in here and... She really likes that fish. Here's the oldest shop that we just saw and look at that. And this is the creator. Wow. And that's him. Give him some promotion. He deserves it. I read online that they were kind of known for the street art and the graffiti and things like that, so when they see these little corridor things, I just have to walk down them. My curiosity gets the better of me all the time. Look at that. I love these old buildings. 1920. Hotel Adam? No, 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 no. I think it should be called 
Hotel The Woo. So I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of insight as to why I chose Iceland. I actually had a choice of Iceland or Paris for my layover and they would both basically be about the same time but I really felt like Iceland is not a place that most vloggers have vlogged. There was a lot of fascinating stuff here that I was really interested in seeing and even though Paris is heavy on my bucket list, part of my layover was gonna be, it was basically gonna be from 8.30 p.m until noon the next day and here my layover was from 1.30 until 6 a.m. like 1.30 p.m. till 6 a.m. the next day and the reason that I opted for this is because in Iceland at this time of the year 24 hour sunlight so I am gonna miss the northern lights which is one of the big things that Iceland's known for which is one of the things I really want to see in my life the northern lights but it was a trade-off and instead of seeing the northern lights I'm gonna get 24 hour daylight which means I'll be running around doing things all day and finding things to see all day long. We're gonna work our way back up to the church. I can't even pronounce it, so I'm not even gonna try, but. Oh, got a lot of Y's and P's. Lots of H's. But yeah. the thing about this church is, the reason they have that statue and why it was tied into the United States is because Leif Erikson was the first person credited as discovering North America. He was like 500 years, I think he, it was 1000 AD, so it was 500 years before Christopher Columbus. What a chiller. And from here you can even see a mountain range in the distance. Well, I'm pretty excited to go in here. We came by here a little bit ago, and they were actually having a funeral when we came in. So, we couldn't enter, they told us we had to come back, and one of the main things I really want to see here is they have a massive pipe organ. I mean, we're talking like five ton pipe organ that this place is known for. And even though the church itself isn't all that old, I mean, it was built in like the 70s mainly, 50s through 70s, different parts of it. But that statue's been here 15 years before that. And that is Leif Erikson standing there holding that massive ax. Look at that. And I'm gonna show you the other side because they have a, uh, an inscription on the other side. And supposedly the design of this church, since they have so many volcanoes here, what they claim is that they designed it to look like the way lava dries when it cools. Now here's the backside of Leifer Erikson, son of Iceland, and you guys probably, if you don't know anything else, you know from all my hikes up to Griffith Park, you've seen that statue there. So this one says, Leifer Erikson, son of Iceland, discovered Vinland, which is Finland, the United States of America to the people of Iceland on the 1,000th anniversary. So there you go. So much for the Christopher Columbus hoax. Now, let's enter this massive church. And I don't know what this thing is. I looked over at it earlier, I thought it was a steel drum, but I don't know. Now that's the name of the church that I cannot pronounce. And there's the beautiful doors. Look at that. Isn't that something? Oh, well, I guess you can get to the top of the tower if you buy tickets. Hmm. It's a pretty long line, though. There it is. Look at that. And there's the famous pipe organ. Look at that. I wanted to walk up to the front and take a look at the altar and just see what this see what this church is like. I've never been in a church in Iceland before. I've been in Roman Catholic churches in Amsterdam, which is kind of crazy because 
For years and years of my life, I was terrified of going in churches. They just gave me the heebie-jeebies like something I can't explain. I think it's because I went to a lot of funerals, but... Now, since they've got a divider here, I'm not going to go past it, but... Man, I am so glad I have this camera lens now. And this is what the view is from the altar. And the holy water. And you can tell they're doing some renovations on it from the outside, but this is the side of the building. Wow. I love architecture. Now, I don't know what this thing is on the end, but when we came from the other direction, it's the first thing we saw. And I'll tell you what the first thing I thought was. I had a flashback to Naked Gun when Frank Drebin's driving up the freeway in San Diego. But I probably shouldn't say that. We just walked into this, and I don't know what this is, but there's little posts all over, and there's a little plaque, so we're gonna go see. What better way to find out, right? These vlogs are just gonna be total tourist. It's not like San Francisco when I went there and I knew pretty much everything and had figured everything out before. I can't read any of that, so. Yeah. If any of you can read Icelandic, you can tell me what that is. Maybe on the other side. Nice. And that's in Icelandic as well. Uh, I'm guessing that's the public bathroom. All right. Now, one of the great, oh, let's see what this is. One of the great things is while we were inside having coffee, the girl that was waiting on us looked at our map and pointed out some places she thought we should check out. Now, I don't know what the story is on this, but anytime I see a kid with his brains flying out of the top, like, one of the cat, uh, what was it? What was that called? Uh, garbage pail kids. I gotta check it out. Interesting picnic tables or whatever these are. No real rhyme or reason to it. She made a friend. I think I scared him off. I'm sorry. So I'm looking for addresses and I go, let's see if we can find a street address. And I look at this building and I'm like, what the heck is that guy doing up there? <laughs> I see you. Well, we're thinking we're gonna eat here over at Cafe Loki. And this is actually a section of Reykjavik that they call the neighborhood of the gods. And there's a reason for that. 15 streets carry names from Norse myth mythology. The neighborhood is sometimes referred to as the neighborhood of the gods as Thor, Freya, and many more gods from the pagan religion have their own streets here. At one time, city authorities tried to name the area Asgard, one of the nine worlds in Norse mythology, and the home of the gods, but the name didn't stick. The one-eyed and wisdom-seeking Odin was the first god to have his namesake here, not surprisingly, as he is traditionally considered to be the highest of the gods residing in Asgard. And it got its name in 1906. So that's where all these uh, street names came from, and we're gonna go over here and eat at Cafe Loki because, oddly enough, I'm in just because it says Viking on the side. So I think it means Vikings welcome. Solid homemade Icelandic food. I'm in. Well, we went ahead and ordered, basically we let the waitress order for us and uh, she's bringing us all the food now. So we have our homemade rye bread with mashed fish and with smoked trout and cottage cheese. And then over here the flat bread with smoked lamb, some dried fish, normally, normally you just spread butter on it or scoop butter up and eat it. And the fermented shark, I recommend to eat glass because it's pretty strong in taste so it will influence how you taste everything else. Oh. Otherwise, it's not as bad as the worst. Well, we finished up most of it, but we have not touched the shark yet. And we're going to have to, unfortunately, I think. Now, they say you, you're supposed to eat that and then immediately drink that. Uh, all right, 
here goes. Fermented shark. The uh, the drink makes it taste like spearmint gum. Ugh. It wasn't all that bad, but if anybody wants that last piece, they're welcome to it. We're not going to have it. Well, I saw online that when you come here, you have to try the rye bread ice cream. So we got one so we could just try it out. It's pretty good. I'm still in California time. Me too. not that bad. I was like, I, I was definitely sick. So definitely one of the pluses to Iceland is that they have the cleanest water you've probably ever tasted in your life. You don't have to buy bottled water. You can drink it right out of the faucet. Everywhere we went was willing to give us water and it tasted amazing. It was truly amazing. Um, now we're going to head out to the Blue Lagoon. Whoa, look at Viking Village. The Viking Hotel. Well, we're riding the bus on our way out to the Blue Lagoon. And if you can believe it, guys, the sun is now setting and it is 1030 at night. There it is, Lionhearts. Do you see all that steam and rising? That's where we're going. Well, hot dog. We are here, gang. Here we are. The Blue Lagoon and the thermal baths. Let's go get in. Ah, oh, yeah. That feels so good. Okay, everything's forgiven. Yeah, everything is forgiven. You know what's funny is that I uh, I gave up a five hour tour. It was either take a five hour tour with like a hundred people on a bus, which I didn't think the footage would be very good, or come out here. And from the time that I knew I was gonna be coming to Iceland, I pretty much started researching and the Blue Lagoon was like number one on my list. So we are here. I can't tell you how happy I am to be here. Uh, how's it feel? Dude, it's so nice. <sighs> He's awesome. Look at all the steam coming off of it. Wow. I honestly cannot recommend this enough. This is like, this is heaven. Heaven. Oh, she says it's warmer over there. Let's go over there. Ah, so all you people that are constantly complaining that I never have a shirt on, well, more naked neck for you all. See if you can control yourself. If you look way over there, that's actually a bar. And you can go over there and you can get alcohol while you're out here. They have all kinds of different packages that come with being out here. All the packages are supposed to come with like a mud mask. However, I noticed hardly anybody, I don't see anybody wearing the mud mask. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Look at this, guys. Look at all the, uh, look at all the steam coming up over here. You see that right there? That's awesome. Oh, it's so warm right here. And uh, I'm loving this, having a waterproof phone. No fear. security slash lifeguard. I'm seeing bridges and all kinds of things over here, so I wanna come over here and take a look around. Everybody, of course, has their phone out. How could you not being here? You enjoying yourself? And that is the sky that I am looking at right now. It's technically 11 p.m. right now, guys. And uh, without having the darkness, I'm not really all that tired. It's kind of surprising. Look at the way the, uh, the light reflects off the water. Isn't that great? Well, there's our proof, 2323 right now. So it's 1123. And they don't close this down until 1230. So we don't have to take our bus out of here until 115. So now we're gonna head over underneath one of these bridges. See, there's one over there as well, but I think we're gonna work our way over here and see what's down there. Maybe it's hotter water. Oh yeah, this is definitely salt water, by the way.
Oh, if you need a drink of pure Icelandic water, there it is. Is that clean water? It is. It's your favorite, the Icelandic water. You animal. It's incredibly warm and shallow in this end. I love this. Oh yeah, what a great view. This is amazing. And then this is where we just walk through. Well, swam through. I think I'm just gonna come over here and float on my back for a while and contemplate life. Like a doctor. If you're a little bit curious about the Blue Lagoon, I got the most basic package you could get, um, including my bus trip here and back, and it roughly came out to about $100. And then I had brought my own suit, and they charged $7 for a towel. So, definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. We could have been seeing geysers and waterfalls, but you know what? You can see that on National Geographic. You come to my channel for the Jordan experience, and the Jordan experience is this. You know, this would have been the best place ever to do a live stream from. Live Q&A, except... Pretty bad Wi-Fi. Iceland, like, the tickets to get out here are not very expensive at all, but it's such a tourist destination now that... It's um, it's pretty expensive for your accommodations. Your food is really expensive. We went um, when we ate earlier. We that was actually a sampler platter that we shared, and our bill came out to about eighty four dollars that we split. So it was like forty two dollars a person. So it's pretty expensive. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of people with a mud mask and I'm starting to think maybe I won't mind too. I'm going to work my way over here and do it. You guys need that footage anyway, don't you? Don't you need to see me in white face? There it is, mud mask time. Hello, sir. And I have to be really careful not to lose this wristband because it keeps sliding off. Because this is how you put your stuff in the locker. You put your stuff in the locker and then you scan it with this wristband and that's how you get everything out at the end. Well, when in Rome, guys, do as the Rome. Actually, when in Iceland, do as the Icelanders. I feel like uh, Ultimate Warrior at the end of WrestleMania 6 with all this stuff flaking off and smeared off. But say you're supposed to leave this on for 5 to 10 minutes and it's good for your complexion or something. I can feel it tingling, so. Then you just wash it off in the water like a pro. Well, the sun has went down considerably since we've been here, but there appears to be a waterfall and we're gonna go see it. Woo! Well, I'm gonna call it a night here from the Blue Lagoon, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Our day in Reykjavik, I have been vlogging since I got off the plane, and I'm going to call it a night and start editing now. I want to thank Kevin Hagman for your very generous donation today. That was extremely nice of you. Have a great night, Lionhearts. I'll see you all tomorrow. Good dog drinking in the lap of my mama after all day working. So dated, I work all day today. Oh, waking my head is aching. Love and pink sky, thank God I'm plowing. Ease my pain, I work so well done now.